Okay, welcome everyone. Yeah. This uh, press conference on competitive cities and the connection to global value chain. My name is Peter Vanham. I am the media lead uh, at the World Economic Forum here present in Medellin. And uh, with me today are three wonderful panelists. I'll uh, start by introducing the lady, Annabel Gonzalez. She is Trade and Competitiveness Director at the World Bank, but here today uh, as the Global Agenda, uh, Global Agenda Council Chair on uh, Competitiveness of the World Economic Forum. Mm -hmm. Then we have Alejandro Franco, who is Director or CEO of Ruta N, organization from Medellin. And finally, of course, Federico Gutierrez, the Mayor of Medellin, the Alcalde, we're very happy to welcome all of you here this afternoon. And thank you all for coming. Uh, we'll be doing this press conference in English and Spanish, uh, and everyone will speak to their best ability in the language they speak best. Uh, and I think you can guess what that means. Uh, I'll be the only one speaking English, and uh, our three colleagues here are uh, addressing you in Spanish. I'm gonna ask a few questions to kick it off to each uh, participant, and afterwards, uh, we'll leave room for a few questions before wrapping up at 4 p.m. Okay, let's start. So we're here today um, to discuss competitive cities and their connection to global value chain. Annabel, when I first heard that, it was a bit complicated for me. Uh, so perhaps could you start by explaining what global value chains are? Thank you, thank you very much, Peter, and I'm overjoyed to be in Medellin together with the mayor and Alejandro. Peter, in order to talk about this report, the Competitiveness Global Council of WEF on Competitive Cities established contact with global value chains. Global value chains actually refers to the productive process that allows a product to be designed in one country in one city that certain parts and components or elements of that product be produced elsewhere and that the different parts and components be assembled in a third country, in a third city. And then this opens up many opportunities for developing countries that need not be experts in manufacturing a good from, in, from beginning to end but can connect it to global and regional value chains and thus participate in in the productive process and obviously integrate themselves into the global economy. In our report, Peter, we say that there is a very important relationship between global value chains and competitive cities. And why? First, because competitive cities are a sort of natural anchor for companies interested in be, uh, having part of their productive process in that city. And global value chains also contribute to turning cities into very powerful magnets that attract innovation, growth, and job creation. So there's a very positive relationship between global global value chains and competitive cities. Uh, much more clear to me now. Uh, so we have these global value chains uh, uh, which, which help countries or cities uh, go into the value chain of producing a good and then exporting it. Um, now, normally we would think in terms of trade and competitiveness in terms of countries. And the new thing here is, of course, that we think in terms of cities. Um, and so you're looking at how cities can uh, include themselves in these global value chains. And then, of course, the question is, uh, how can they do it? And I think you've uh, established around five ways of doing it. Is that correct? So, yes, we have identified all the things a city needs to be competitive and thus attract investment, be it domestic or international, to connect to global value chains. And these competitiveness factors also relate to uh, regulatory measures and policies and institutions and infrastructure, as well as what we call 
soft connectivity, uh, that is to say, developing skills in the people, having innovation policies in place, and so on and so forth. And I would say that five very important results we identified in our report on competitive cities and global value chains. The first is that to join a global value chain is very positive for a city's competitiveness, first because it connects them to the world of trade and investment, and also because it contributes to turn them into engines for innovation, for productivity. And trade, another very important aspect is that comp the competitiveness of a city uh, in this case is not something that can be achieved uh, w once. This is not a one-time thing. This uh, requires gr uh, constant effort of repositioning yourself, uh, re-identifying opportunities, and uh, to be ready to make the best of them. So I think that this is something that, you know, it's uh, very appropriate for us uh, being here in Medellin and present the report here because of we studied Medellin in our report, and it's a wonderful example of a city that's been working very hard in a sustained manner to improve it, uh, on improving its competitiveness. The third result identified in our report is that cities must, on the basis of their physical infrastructure, develop a soft the connectivity that is as important as the physical infrastructure. And we're talking about a population that has the right skills that we have innovation, science and technology policies in place. And the fourth point we've identified in our report is that cities flourish and boom in environment of openness, open to investment, open to trade, open to people, and open to ideas. And finally, the fifth point we identify in our report is that it is of paramount importance for city leaders, uh, both in the public sector as well as the private sector, know how value chains work and how investment investors make investment decisions so that they can invest resources in enhancing and improving competitiveness in an effort to bring uh, global value chains and in integrate themselves there too. And the, the result is uh, dual greater productivity and greater employment and greater growth. Uh, explanation. Um, and for people that want to read more about this report, I will be releasing this publicly uh, uh, to uh, tonight. Uh, it looks like this, and you will all get uh, uh, a copy of the report uh, by email. Uh, now, of course, there's one thing is, of course, the theory and what you can find about what uh, uh, makes cities uh, competitive globally. Uh, uh, the other thing is, of course, how it applies to specific cities. And, and the wonderful um, thing that we have here today is that Medellin is actually one of the best-in-class examples in uh, Latin America or Colombia or even Latin America uh, when it comes to inserting itself in global value chains. And so that's when I turn uh, to you, Alejandro, and I want to ask you, because you've been working on this case of Medellin uh, uh, with uh, Ruta Enne, uh, what have you found? Uh, why is Medellin such a good example uh, for uh, this uh, uh, case, and, uh, and, and, and what were your main findings? Thank you very much, Pete, and I too want to greet everyone. The first thing we have to say is that we're overjoyed to be part of the report 30 years ago. This would have been impossible today, 30 years later. We are a benchmark for the world. So uh, we to say that we are in a study together with cities like Bilbao, well, it, you know, makes us very proud. And what has happened that we uh, started off with our conditions and see how, based on that, we could emerge. Naturally, global value chains are meaningful from a, from our perspective, and our perspective is talent. And that is what we have reinforced because, yes, we are part of all these global value chains, but our competitiveness undoubtedly must be on the side of talent and innovation. And we, under that taxonomy of city competitiveness, have understood that taxonomy and the way in which we've been working because when we speak of a taxonomy for city competitiveness, one has to do with public policy. In Medellin, we have developed a science, technology, and innovation plan that allows us to focus our growth in three specific areas, ICTs, health, and energy. Why? Because this obviously 
profits from all uh, the things we have here. And since we are far away from the sea, we have proven competitiveness in spite of our being so far away from the coastline. Second, it has much to do with the the uh, having strong institutions and the institutional framework we have here and we can take pr great pride in saying that we have a university enterprise and government uh, partnership and we all work together for the benefit of our city so it isn't a single view of the uh, policy of the current administration but rather this is agreed uh, with the, the business community and with the academia and together we've defined uh, our north and we have a strong technological centers we have research universities that transfer this research to uh, the market and obviously companies that have integrated themselves in the international value chain Another aspect of the competitiveness taxonomy has to do with hard connectivity. And here we speak of how we develop the district for innovation. This city will have 172 hectares earmarked exclusively to making space so that the companies, technological development centers come and set up a shop here in Medellin and grow thanks to the platform that the Latin America offers to, as a gateway to Latin America. And like Annabelle said during her remarks, it has much to do with uh, soft uh, connectivity. And we speak of, you know, integrating into networks, but knowledge networks. If we're talking about ICTs, health and energy, we need to have the best in the world. And that's where we have identified who is at that state of the art knowledge and how are we connecting to them. Today in Medellin, we have identified collaborative working networks with others in the world. And we also have, you know, virtual schemes to interact. We have a very powerful platform, Sonforai, that allows us to connect investors, researchers, the startups, and large companies under collaborative schemes so that knowledge flows and the uh, challenges and major problems may be uh, worked together thanks to this collaboration. So there's no doubt that we have transformed as a city. I mean, like I said earlier, this 30 years ago would have been unthinkable. And we have achieved fantastic results uh, in our city in that innovation district. We already have 135 companies from 22 countries uh, producing over 22,000 jobs uh, in the knowledge area. And they also... Uh, permeate uh, other sectors. One direct job can uh, have around it five uh, indirect jobs, and that is uh, strengthening our city's economy. And it's also worth mentioning that we are working very closely on strengthening uh, that uh, segment of the city and we have clear inno innovation processes that will help them to develop at least one innovative product a year. So that uh, is uh, what explains how we have uh, integrated ourselves uh, into these uh, global value chains uh, and uh, we've done so on the basis of our talent, having the right institutional framework in place. That you are a part of the global value chain then that the World Economic Forum uh, 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 is welcome here and, and, and to be in Medellin. Uh, you said, of course, 30 years ago, uh, the situation of Medellin was completely different. And today we are uh, the big example uh, with other cities like Bilbao and Dubai, I think you mentioned. Uh, and of course, we have here uh, someone with us, uh, which is the mayor. Uh, we're not sure if he'll be here in 30 years, uh, but he'll be here for sure for a good number of years. <laughs> um, and so maybe, uh, Federico, um, I should ask you what you expect for the future for Medellin, where will we see, if you're already best in class, uh, where will we see you in, in five years? Maybe that's a, a manageable um, years to look forward to. In 30 years, I do hope to be here alive and kicking, maybe not as a mayor of the city. And it is, uh, I take great pride in being the current mayor of Medellin and to have you with here. So welcome. And I do agree with what Alejandro and Anabella said, because you see, the first thing we have to do is understand where Medellin came from uh, and why we are where we are. In 1991, we were the most violent city in the world. No one respected 
visited us. No one thought we had a future, and we started working, and the best thing that Medellin has is its people, its people's talents, their eagerness, their desire to work. And if there's been something key in this development that is now reflected in Annabelle's numbers is the way in which we teamwork, how we work together, enterprise, university, and state. That gathered, we have a monthly gathering, a monthly meeting with the leading entrepreneurs of the city, and we uh, attend as the municipal authority uh, together with universities, and together we identify public policy, and that has given rise to projects like uh, Route N, Ruta N, and this entire entrepreneurship system has been strengthened, and that's why it's key for us to make sure that the city continues to improve in competitiveness terms. As a city, we've done a lot of things, but we have yet a lot more to do. Our goals are very high goals, and I would say that a key issue in competitiveness is something that is being done in the region, which is to overcome that road backwardness that we had for so many decades because of our topography, the highways that are being built, and key news like yesterday's when together with the governor, we initiated a work, which is the Toyo Tunnel, which is going to be the longest tunnel in Colombia, 9.8 kilometers and brings us closer to the sea for us to export our goods because we have to export increasingly more. If we want top quality jobs, we need top quality education. And that's something that, you know, prior administrations have been working on. That's another great thing in this city is that Medellin has had several successive governments and we draw on and improve. That's why that enterprise, academia and state partnership is so important as is connectivity and as well as investing in science, technology, and innovation. That pact for innovation in the, that by 2018, we will be investing two GDP points in science, technology, and innovation will help us improve our position in that ranking that we hope to continue improve and that the innovation district in the northern part of the city where we have these 162 hectares reserved so that the best companies of the world that are in science, technology, and innovation come to Medellin will continue to empower our development. But what do we need? Continue to prepare ourselves and that is why I insist so much on education. Education, education is key, it's core. And that has been one of the most important findings in every competitiveness study, survey, and report. But to close, I'd like to say that we have a city that, in general, we know where it's heading. And citizens support the city administration. The citizenry is convinced that we're on the right track. And trust, trust is key. The word trust is part of a language. And after having lived the very worst today in Medellin, there is confidence, there is trust. And the, the eyes of the world have fallen upon Medellin, and they're following us very closely. So one of the outcomes of this uh, forum is in just two days of fantastic uh, discussions that leave uh the city, many good things, but what uh, comes afterward, and this is something that we've been doing with uh, the entrepreneurs, uh, which is inviting them to come to Medellin, to invest in this country, and to believe in our city. And I, I love what you said about confidence, uh, uh, that confidence uh, at the end is the most important thing. And, uh, and of course, uh, we, we have seen a, a great report and a, a great case study of how Medellin has gotten to where it is. Uh, and, and you've been able to, to say it in a taxonomy, eh, in all the different industries of, of how it gotten there. But at the end of the day, uh, uh, Mayor, you say it's also, or most importantly, about confidence. Um, with that, uh, I'd like to now see if there's any journalist who have the confidence uh, to ask a question uh, to any of our panelists, and I'll start here with uh, Roberto. Me faltó, me faltó oh, algo sure. si puedo but if you allow me, I'd like to supplement something. We mentioned uh, something yesterday, and I apologize for interrupting you. We were with the National Association of Industrialists, uh, which is that the big companies per se are not competitiveness. They're not competitive. They need a good uh, supply chain. Would they need to have a good supply chain and good suppliers. And the big companies we have in Colombia that have allowed other companies to become their suppliers and we have a good supply chain has allowed us to be even more competitive. All those anchor companies are key for us. And a company uh, 
like uh, Epemea, which is uh, our pride. It's, you know, a 100% state-owned and run public utility. 25% of our budget year in, year out comes from Epeme transfers to the city of Medellin, companies like Ecopetrol, like Aceb. So we have a good number of key companies that have allowed us, Annabel, to be a city that is competitive compared to other Latin American cities. Flyers, indeed, uh, are uh, present in that value chain and not just uh, the large companies, uh, of which are, of course, a few good examples in Colombia, too. And I want to turn to uh, Roberto and afterwards uh, Lauren for two questions. Please go ahead. Can you speak up a little bit? Yes. Uh, I know you've taken uh, baby steps. I mean, do you hope to become a Silicon Valley? Obviously, industry here is not like Silicon Valley yet. But uh, is that your intent? I mean, would you like to e eventually get to that level? And if that is the case, how do you expect to get to that level? Question already uh, uh, here. Lauren wanted to ask a question, so go ahead, and then we'll go over the answers. Yeah, please go ahead. Good afternoon. My question is for you, Mr. Gutierrez. I am Ormas de, from. My question is a very impactful thing I saw when I arrived in Medellin a year ago from Bogota is the culture, the city culture. Ah, the, no, yes, the, the citizen, yes, the citizen culture. Yes. On the me on the metro, there's no garbage. No one is eating or screaming. A, a person walking along the streets. Uh, how how did this process start? Twenty thirty years ago. How did you go about educating citizens? I mean, it's not that you have, uh, you know, very big fines on people. Uh, how did you change people's mindsets? Uh, to in order to implement uh, all the social changes that you have uh, implemented in Medellin. Start here, and the question was, uh, can uh, can Medellin be Silicon Valley if it is not yet? And that was, I believe, the question. If I say Roberto, that gracias por la pregunta. Pues yo creo que Thank you for your question. And I would say no, because we have to be very clear. We have a clear mandate as a city which is improving the quality of life of the citizens of Medellin by generating better jobs and better quality jobs and for these better quality jobs to help us improve the city's economy as well. That we from Ruta N can help solve many of these serious pressing problems in the city and thanks to our collective intelligence and our institutions, we will be able to, res to respond to that. And if we manage to do that, then we would be achieving our goal of transforming the vocation of our city's economy and go from being a traditional economy into a knowledge-based economy. And that's where we want, I mean, regardless of it being Silicon Valley or emulating what's happening in London or Israel, which are our benchmarks, no doubt, is to understand that uh, in the city we need to work on four main pillars for us to influence the quality of life of people, to have unlimited talent. We said earlier we need to develop the conditions so that we have in the city the talent required to manage knowledge-based business networks. How do we integrate Medellin in the world and the world into Medellin through knowledge-based networks and vert online interaction so that we are on the frontier of knowledge. Three, the topic of infrastructure. We are betting heavily on developing an innovation sector so that Colombia will be, will be hosting science, technology, and innovation companies. And we would be a, a hub out of which you could work with all of Latin America. And we need capital available. We are deploying all efforts possible to first the state, we views us as an entrepreneurial state and any money invested. And since we are socializing risk, we also socialize gains, which means that if we put money into something, we will get our return on capital, ensure more capital, and how 
to make sure that the uh, hedge funds uh, come and settle in Medellin and there will be funds available to invest in the city's initiatives. So my concrete answer is we want our own model and to learn from the others in the world and tailor that to our reality in order to improve the quality of life of our citizens. Uh, for the answer to the second question, uh, which is, uh, uh, you know, looking at Medellin and, and being surprised at, at how responsible citizens are, uh, how is it all started and and uh, and, and where, where does it come from? Why, why is Medellin now what it is? And I would like to supplement what Alejandro said regarding the role of Ruta N, which is key to us. And it is that the goal is to generate good quality jobs for people and enhance and improve their quality of life. But that process requires resolving and help us resolve the most pressing problems we have as a city through social innovation. And that's key. And that is one one of the instructions and roles of Ruta N, which is key to us in terms of healthcare, urban education, mobility, quality of air, and we've been working on that. And this has to translate into actual benefits for the city, and that's why there is close articulation between Ruta N and all the teachers working in the public system, and that has been re requested by the private sector when we've organized those big meetings, state enterprise and academia, they have said we need Ruta N to do that. Your name is what, excuse me? Lauren, Lauren, okay, Lauren. That, I really like your question because that is what differentiates this city. What is the best of Medellin? We can speak of its mountains, its flowers, of many, many things, of our products, but the best, the best of Medellin is its people. And those people who live in Medellin have a, a special feeling of belonging to our city. Those of us who live in Medellin love our city. We take great pride in living here and being from here, and that means that all these citizen culture processes are more viable when you have a city process. That does not mean that that's something with which we are born and it stays at that. No, we have to work this day in and day out. For example, on the metro, you mentioned the, the metro, the subway. This was accomplished through a strategy uh, that applied before, during, and after the construction and operation of the metro, and it's called the metro culture, and that is understood by everyone who goes to a uh, station and uh, hops on one of the cars, love for the system, that's key, and uh, confidence, trust. So you may wonder why around the stations there's no garbage, but uh, one street away you can. Uh, I mean, you know, here we also litter, but we don't litter, excuse me, we deposit litter and garbage where we have to. That is a very important culture. And now that we've approved our four-year development plan, citizen culture plays a key role, and that is a cross-cutting to government. For us, citizen culture is transversal, cross-cutting. It has to do with security, coexistence, tolerance, respect for others. And that citizen behavior is what makes the city differentiate and have added value because the city goes beyond the mayor. I may be the mayor and I can have the best of intentions with the city, but if I don't have a citizen right working and, you know, shoulder to shoulder with me, it's going to be very difficult to progress. There are 2.5 million people in Medellin, and citizen culture means that every citizen with the, their daily actions will turn Medellin into a better city, that we respect traffic signs, that we respect others, we respect our family members, our neighbors. So we have to continue working on that, and that citizen culture is in the development plan, and we work it every day. And what does that translate into? It translates into confidence. Con citizen uh, trust is very important and that is what we are aiming for. And an exercise of trust explains WEF being here today because it trusted in us, it has confidence in Medellin and the country because it's been a witness of what we've lived, of what we've gotten out of and what we're getting into. And we don't want to destroy that trust and we truly thank you uh, 
with uh, for having come and thank you and Bill who have been our allies, our partners and with whom we must continue working. And this is, you know, a daily exercise, but you have to cultivate it like flowers. You have to grow it. You have to add a little water and then harvest. But we... Uh, can say that that is Medellin's biggest differentiator. I would say love for the city makes the difference. Some love for the city, and thank you uh, to all the panelists for being present, and thank you for everyone who came to the session. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Gracias.